It's Monday, Victoria Day weekend, and today I'm actually going to garden for the first time. But before I do, I have to get some bread on the go. Now I can just leave this to rest for a few hours while I go out and put dirt in bags in preparation for the gardens. Somebody's ready. We haven't done this for a while, have we, Buff? At least not for gardening. So good morning. If you're new to the channel, my name's Judith. I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Zone 5 Gardening. And I live on the top floor of a threeplex with my husband, Dominic. I grow food in small spaces. So as you can see from behind me, I have mega grow bags. I do have gardens at the front and I have a secret food forest garden in the back. Because I don't own the property, my first husband does. He has plans to finish the patio in the back which means that I have to dig up my garden in the back and I have to transplant all of what is in there into these grow bags. All of these bags are Hugel culture bags. If you don't know what Hugel culture is it's just using natural organic matter such as grass clippings, wood, wood chips, leaves, compost, horse manure, sheep manure, chicken manure creating the bags and leaving them for a season. So I created all these last summer with the intention that they would decompose and they would be ready this year for planting. So with Hugo culture, you can plant directly. In my point of view, it's better if you wait a full year after you've created the Hugo culture before you plant. And if you're interested in knowing more about how to do that, I will put a link in the description box below. So today's objective is to get all of that dirt into all of these grow bags. These are triple crown thornless blackberries that are propagated from my vine up near the book exchange just along the fence there. These I'm going to plant in these first two grow bags. This is the horseradish plant that I took out of the wooden grow box here. Those are, well, most of its roots. And there's still a lot of roots in here. Each of these roots is now a horseradish plant. We're removing this so we can put more of the grow bags here. <gasps> An earthworm! Come to me, my little lovies. So this is the garlic bed and I just noticed it's damaging the fence so I have to pull out all the garlic and take out some of this dirt to move it away from the fence and then replant the garlic. Hello, this is Broom. Broom is out here today doing a lot of work. I'm not getting paid anything. Hi, and this is Shovel. We both don't get paid. Success. So I've planted the horseradish at the center and planted all the garlic around it. Horseradish, radish, potatoes and garlic all grow well together.
The purpose of straw is twofold. First of all, it keeps a plant off the ground. If a plant is kept off the soil, especially if you're eating something from the top up, such as lettuce, it protects the lettuce from getting bacteria that can cause salmonella poisoning. So it helps keep the plant off the ground. But the other thing that it does as well is it protects the soil from drying out from the sun. So when you water it, it retains the moisture. Just keep in mind that not all straw is equal. You want to make sure that you buy straw that has not been sprayed with chemical because if it's sprayed with chemical, it will actually kill your plant, in particular tomato plants. You'll notice that my girl's a little stressed out here because her roots were exposed. She'll recover. She'll probably get a little more stressed out by the end of the day, but as the night, the cooler weather comes, she'll pick up and by tomorrow morning, she'll look a lot better. We've emptied out most of that. That was pure Hugo culture. And we created these two new bags. And I put the vertical V climbing structure. We buried it in those two bags with the intention that I will plant watermelon on that side coming up. And I have cucumbers on this side to grow up. And then of course I have the rest of the space in this bag and in this bag to grow other things. So this is going to create shade and I was thinking this would be an ideal spot for a blueberry bush because they like part sun. That's east over there is east. So it will get a lot of morning sun. It'll get a lot of west sun coming through this way, but it'll be protected from the hot south sun by the cucumber and the watermelon vines. So essentially all of these bags that don't have anything in them are now ready for planting, which I will do that tomorrow because it's already two o'clock in the afternoon and I've been going since nine o'clock and I haven't eaten, Dom hasn't eaten, we're a little tired. So that will be tomorrow's project. Hi Buffy. This is yesterday's bread that I just pulled out of the fridge. So I started making this two days ago. It spent all last night and today in the refrigerator. And now it's time to bake it. But I need to score it first. This is today's bread. Now I'm going to fold this a final time, shape it, and I'm gonna use the same proofing basket that I just took the other loaf out. And I use rice flour because I find you use less flour and it doesn't stick. And now it just goes in the fridge until morning, until I'm ready to bake it. And if I don't get around to baking this in the morning, it's okay, I can bake it tomorrow night. And truthfully, I have left sourdough bread in my fridge for upwards to three days to ferment just because I didn't have time to bake it. It was the most delicious bread I've ever eaten because it takes on more soured flavor, which is something that I really like. See all that beautiful blister? Now it's not as tall as I would have liked it, 
but it's still a beautiful loaf of bread. And I can tell, you can see by all the holes on the top, it's going to have nice pores in it. Be a nice porous crumb. Perfect. This is really good bread. A nice crumb, consistent, even porousness. Good spring. It's just enough soured. Normally I like a little salt and butter on mine, but this is perfect just the way it is.